Hello everybody and welcome. Today in the ecology class for freshmen, we're going to talk about types of ecosystem. My name is Devan and this is the second presentation in the second part of lecture concept talking about ecosystems. This is more in general. So for the beginning, we're going to talk about everything we talked in the, in the previous presentation. So as you remember, there every ecosystem on this planet has three main components. <clears throat> there are biota, biota and energy, and then there are some sub particles included under these three names. And then uh, if we, if you have all three of it, the uh, ecosystem will be called complete. But if it's missing one of these three main uh, components, it will be called inco incomplete ecosystem. We talked about this in the previous presentation. This is just a reminder. Besides divisions by complete and incomplete, there are also aquatic and terrestrial ones. This is the biggest, biggest division in the, on this planet. And of course, both of them have some subdivisions. For now, we'll talk about aquatic ecosystems. So here is our planet. We're rotating. You can definitely see that the blue color is dominating it, which means that almost two-thirds of the planet, more than two-thirds actually, is covered with water. And only 2% of it is fresh water. Most of it being trapped in the glaciers on the uh, north and south pole. But all of all this water that is present uh, on planet is basically trapped, so it's not escaping uh, the the system. It's only rotating from one shape to another, from one state to another. Fresh creation and clouds and so on. We'll talk about the water cycle in some of the next presentations. We're now going to talk about aquatic ecosystems and its biodiversity. And what determines uh, biodiversity in water is mostly the salinity. So it's something that influencing most in the types of the biodiversity that will develop in a, in a certain aquatic environment. And then if you talk about salinity in aquatic environment, they can definitely be divided into two main groups, so marine or freshwater. And all of them have subdivisions. Uh, so marine ecosystem can be some large marine ecosystems or oceans as we know it, and seas, uh, mangroves and corals, and freshwater will be lakes and rivers and wetland. On each of these we'll talk in more detail. So this is marine ecosystem. A marine ecosystem are different than aquatic mostly in the, the moment of salt dissolved in the water. Salinity in them is higher than in freshwater surroundings uh, by marine uh, large marine ecosystems we think on oceans even though it's a one single water mass as you saw in the, in the rotating uh, earth image just for our comfort we divided it in four basically major oceans so arctic atlantic uh, indian ocean and pacific so organization is better after oceans which would be the major Major marine ecosystems can talk about coral reefs and, and mangrove forests. Those are two ecosystems with the uh, biggest productivity, one of the biggest concentration of, of organic matter production and biodiversity assemblage. Mentioned in several contexts, coral reefs and mangroves would be tropical pandams of salt marshes. They're areas inhabited by specific plant and animal life uh, they are highly adapted to the mixture of fresh and aquatic water also tightly connected to the land okay in this picture is you can see the map you can see where coral and mangroves can be found also some lakes and rivers on, on the mainland but you can definitely see they're all connected with the with the land this would be something that's called zonation of the deep water in the ocean. So oceans and seas can vary in salinity and, and depth and so on. But there are some general division in zonation dependent on the depth, which can definitely determine the assemblage of, of living 
things that are inhibiting the certain zones more on this in the future uh, slides. But here you can see how the temperature is changing towards the depth and um, light availability and so on. Um, now on freshwater, so there are three main types of freshwater ecosystem. There are lake, rivers, and wetlands. Lakes are the major water masses on land. And if the la lake is big enough, it can similar influence to uh, to temperature of the surrounding and climate like the oceans again. They they're developing some microclimates and they can even have tides, high and low ones, because of their size. Rivers of course are the major source of fresh drinking water for most of the people in the world they can be really high in biodiversity but do we do have a problem with the pollution of the rivers in in some countries rivers can also be divided into mountain rivers or flatland rivers their size differs but um, they are definitely having a great role in the determining the quality of life their surrounding and then you have wetlands which would be similar to mangroves we mentioned in the aquatic water it's just they are uh, areas that are changed in in the time so at some point they can dry out but they are playing a great role in a fresh water cycle and freshwater biodiversity and this is how um, zonation in the freshwater looks like this is an example of a deeper lake so similar to the picture we showed on oceans before this is how it looks like in the in the lakes the, they are uh, similar uh, different names but the conditions in the idea of a species assembly due to temperature and sunlight availability is really similar so next to salinity which what we mentioned in the beginning to be the most determining factor for species assemblage. One of the other physical properties would be uh, temperature, light, and avail uh, light availability in the pH. So temperature drops with the with the depth, of course, more water mass, more hard to heat up by sunlight. Uh, different species develop with different strategies how to cope and to to that change and how to adapt to the area they live in so not not all all the species can live in the same depth so they have certain positions determined by these physical properties but the truth is that in the, all the living creatures we know today live in a uh, first fifth of an of uh, deep water oceans it also has to do a lot with light availability because as we saw in the incomplete uh, ecosystems before in the levels where there are no there are no light available there's no primary production so the the whole uh, cycle of a matter is changing species have to be specifically adapted to it with uh, their feeding habits and so on and then we talk uh, talk about ph which would be the sourness of the surrounding ph is actually determined by certain chemicals dissolved in the water and some different species are differently adapted to different ph levels and they develop specific strategies to cope with it Next to these physical chemicals uh, properties, we can also talk about nitrate, phosphorus, and, and oxygen dissolved in the water, which would definitely be one of the most important specifics of the water to determine where what kind of biodiversity will develop. And this is really tightly connected to the to continents and the land around it because a lot of these chemicals uh, are ending up in the water from the land from the runoffs and so on the water can be defined also by the level of oxygen availability in the water and there are some species that are 
basically used as a de determinant of the quality of the water in the matter of oxygen because they their need for oxygen is different but also the amount of the oxygen in the water depends on the temperature so as always it is all really connected and fragile the, the pH we talked about uh, when we mentioned corals and their dying off because the pH is changing and they're really sensitive to it and the pH is changing because the water water temperature is rising and the the wa the hotter the water is the co2 is dissolving faster the more co2 the lacks oxygen this is how it works in the nature it's all really connected and the connections are really fragile and sometimes they are really not predictable okay so we talked um, a lot about these biodiversity uh, connected to the properties of the surrounding but in all of them they are there are these four complete well, complete ecosystem there's always these four types of biota even uh, that doesn't matter if you're talking about fresh or aquatic or marine aquatic biodiversities they're always joining these four main groups so as a plankton you know those are three tiny microscopic creatures living in in the upper layer of the water there are three types so you have phytoplankton which would be the primary producer there one would say that phytoplankton is responsible for 70 percent of the oxygen on this planet they are responsible for the oxygen production but also they are producing together with the zooplankton the huge biomass you know that the biggest creatures living like uh, blue whale is feeding only specifically on plankton so they are having a great role in the, in the in the matter production that's why phytoplankton is a primary producer but the zooplankton is usually feeding on phytoplankton they're they're connected and producing a lot of material for for food and then you have ultraplankton which is also usually uh, phyto ones but they are uh, bacterias and they are uh, even smaller in size than the, the other two groups of plankton. Then this next group is a nectar. A nectar is a um, group of, of uh, animals living in the middle part of, of the inhabited water area. They are moving, but they are moving intentionally, not like plankton floating. They are uh, mobile creatures. They can be fish or squids. Uh, turtles and so on. They are basically the users of this the plankton and then a primer production and keeping the <clears throat> the matter moving down to the food chain. Then lower on the bottom we have benthos. Benthos are immobile creatures. Those are the species are being um, anchored to the bottom or buried under or species walking on the on the bottom of the area they live in so they are shells or crabs or sponges or snails and all those species they are immobile in them if you compare them to nectar and last but not least would be decomposers they are usually bacteria they are feeding also bentos have uh, some preferences on, on using uh, the byproducts of nectar in, in upper trophic levels but decomposers are playing the biggest role in cycling the matter so from byproducts back to the use, usable matter for the rest of the trophic levels and this is how it looks like in a, in a random lake so you have um, plants producing primer and bacterias, primer, primer matter as a primer production, and it goes further down to the food chain and back, back up to the highest trophic levels where it can be. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. In the next presentation, we will talk about terrestrial biodiversities and ecosystems. Thanks for listening. Ciao.